All right, so let's create our first game asset. So in this tutorial, we'll be making a Viking inspired shield. Let's start off by creating a cylinder. So in the create tab, let's click cylinder and anywhere in the space, let's just create a reasonable size cylinder. So maybe something like this. I might use a radius of 70 here. Maybe a height of three. I'm gonna reduce the height segments to one. And I do want this to be less jaggedy on the outside. So I might choose a side number of 24. Great, so I'm gonna right click in the scene to cancel that tool. And for me, I prefer using a gray color for my objects. So on the right here, I'm gonna click this little red swatch and change that color to gray. Pressing the move tool, which is W on the keyboard, I'm gonna go down to the um, coordinate systems down here. And you can see that this object that I've just created is sitting at negative seven, X, 21, Y, and zero in the Z. Now I wanna zero this out so it's sitting right in the center of my scene. And I can easily do that just by right clicking these little arrows here. Great. Now I wanna make sure that I can see the wireframes so I can see what I'm actually doing. To get the wireframes on, just press F4 on your keyboard. Right, so the first thing I want to do is create that metal band that runs around the shield. I need to modify this shape. So to do that, I can press 1 on the keyboard, and that will take me to my modifier tab. And here I can apply any sort of modifiers I want. And you can see, despite cancelling this tool, I still have access to the parameters. So if I did want to change it, I still have the ability to do that. Now I'm going to hover my mouse over this edge. I'm just going to pop my modifier tab out two times. This just gives me an extra bit of room here so there's less scrolling involved. And on the left here, I want to hide this scene explorer. And that's just a personal preference to give me a bit more screen real estate. So in the toolbar at the top, right towards the right of the middle, we have the scene explorer or layers explorer pressed in. We want to press that button again to just hide that for now. So the way I like to work is non-destructively. So we're going to be utilizing a lot of this layer stack inside Max. It's a very, very powerful tool here. So opening up the modifiers list, what I want to do is add an edit poly modifier. You can see I have a preset here, but you can also find it towards the bottom. And this is alphabetical order. So you can see we have edit poly. I like to add two on top. Now, the reason why I like to work like this is because if I make any changes here, just like as I'm doing now, and let's just bring that down a bit. Let's do a little bit of modeling here. And for some reason, I've done a mistake, just like I've done here. Or my senior art director wants this change. I don't have to start again. What I can do is just right click this top editable poly modifier and press delete or I can have this highlighted and press a little trash can down here and this sets me back all the way back here so I don't need to start again so quite often I'll be using a lot of editable polys or edit polys sorry and a lot of different modifiers here to work in a non-destructive workflow so let's add that edit poly back Press E on the keyboard 
and we have edit poly here. Okay, so let's create that middle band that runs around this shield. So in the selection rollout menu, let's press polygon. So the hotkey for that is four. You can see that we have a number of different buttons here. The hotkey for these buttons is one, two, three, four, and five. So let's press four on the keyboard to go back to polygon selection. Left click and let's grab this center large polygon face. Now if yours looks a little different to mine, say like this, all you have to do is press F2 on the keyboard to change that. Now there's some instances where this is quite useful. So you can toggle that on and off if you want. So let's hold down, well first off, let's go to our scale tool by pressing R on the keyboard. Let's hold down shift and scale in. Because we need more resolution here to be able to extrude out that metal band. Hold down shift, move your cursor into the center of this gizmo, and let's drag inwards. Something like that would do for now. We also want to create that center dome that's in the middle of our Viking shield. So whilst we're here, let's create that area for us to work with later on. So let's hold down shift again, scale inwards, something like that. Okay. So with this center polygon selected still, let's create the extrusion piece for that metal band and for the one in the center as well. So all we have to do is press control on our keyboard to add to our selection. And let's grab one of these polygons on the outer edge and let's double click the polygon next to it. And that will create a ring selection for us. Let's move to our move tool, which is W on the keyboard. And while holding down shift, I'm going to move this up using the X handle. Something like that will do for now. We can always make these changes a little bit later. So let's take a look at what we've made. I'm going to take wireframe on shaded off by pressing F4. And I'm making sure that I'm in object mode by not having any of these buttons pressed. Now, in this sort of state, it's sort of hard to see things because there's not much details there, but we can make that a little bit easier to see just by going up to our view viewport menus in the top left here. And the third menu down, which is this one here, I wanna click that and pick high quality. And this just gives us a little bit of extra shadowing, ambient inclusion, so we can see a bit more details in our model. And I'm gonna keep that on for now. So let's press F4 again, and let's continue modeling. So I wanna create this dome shape in the middle here. So I'm gonna press four on my keyboard, and that will allow my polygon selection mode to happen. I'm gonna grab this center polygon here, and I'm going to do a series of insets and extrusions. So let's press R on the keyboard to go into our scale mode. Hold down shift and let's scale in. Something like that would do. And let's release. Press W on the keyboard. Hold down shift. Grab the Z handle. And let's bring that right up. Now, let's press R again on the keyboard, and let's just scale that right in, and we're not pressing down Shift this time. Something like that would be fine. And let's bring that down a little bit, I think. Great. So to round this off, I'm gonna need another line here. 
I can quickly add a line just by pressing the hotkey Alt 1. So this will activate Swift Loop. You can see if I hover over one of these edges, it will add a line there. So you can see that by the preview that's showing up. So I think about halfway would be fine. Right click to cancel the tool. And with that selected, we can scale out. Now, if for some reason you misclicked and you don't have that selected anymore, just double click this edge and it will select the whole loop for us. Let's press R on the keyboard and let's scale outwards. Checking our work. And let's grab this center polygon again by pressing four on the keyboard. And let's bring that down. Some little adjustments here. Oops. That. Okay. Doesn't need to be perfect for now, but that looks pretty good to me. Let's take a look at our work. So I'm going to press whatever selection button I have pressed in again. So in this case, I have my edge selection mode selected. So I'm going to press two on the keyboard and just watch this button here. It will deselect and now we're in object mode. I'm going to press F4 on the keyboard to see our work. And just take a look at it. Pretty good. So there's a couple of things that I've noticed. So just looking over here, you can see that it's quite faceted, meaning that each individual polygon face is being shown and rendered separately here. You can see that happening over here as well, up here and on the outer edge. So we can fix that just by adjusting the smoothing groups here. So let's go back to our model, press four on the keyboard, and we want to grab this center face. And what we can do is just grow our selection. So we're just grabbing this dome here. The hot key for that is control up on your arrow keys to grow your selection. And to shrink your selection is control down arrow. Don't go too far though, because if you shrink it too far, control up won't bring it back. You have to reselect. Now the button for that is just over here in your selection rollout menu. Grow, shrink, and we want to grow it until we have just this dome part selected. Now in the big list on the right here, we want to scroll all the way down. And you'll see something called polygon smoothing groups. Now we want to clear all and we want to make sure each of these polygon faces share the same smoothing group. So let's press one. Let's check out our work. So let's press four on the keyboard again. So we can see what we're doing and great. That looks fantastic. Okay. So let's press four on the keyboard again to go back to polygon selection. Let's grab one of these other faces that are problematic. So this one here, let's press control and double click the polygon face next to it. And that'll create a loop selection for us. And we want to do the same thing. So let's just go all the way down to the bottom, clear all. And because these two faces aren't touching, we can use the same smoothing group. Although just to be safe, let's just press three. Deselect uh, our selection here by pressing four again on the keyboard and it's fixed that right up. Now let's just repeat for the other areas. In this case, I'm going to be using four. And let's grab this one here and this one, double click the one next to it, clear all, and let's give that something like seven. Okay. Let's go back into object mode, click off the object 
and let's take a look at what we've done. The grid is kind of getting in the way here, so I'm going to hide that temporarily by pressing G on the keyboard. Okay, so let's add a little bit more visual interest to this model here. Now, I think I want to make the band a little bit wider. And I want to clean up the shapes a little bit. So, by pressing F4, I can bring the wireframe on shaded again. And you can see that we have this edge here that really does nothing. So, I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard to go into edge selection and double click this edge. This will create a loop selection for us. And I'm just going to remove that. So I'm going to press backspace on the keyboard to get rid of that edge. But one thing does happen when I do that. If I press 1 on the keyboard to go to my vertex selection, you can see that the vertice is still remaining. And that can be a problem. Now, there are some instances where that is what we want. In this case, we don't want that. So let's press Control Z to get back. And what we want to do in this case is go back to edge selection with that highlighted. Let's press Control Backspace. Now, if we go back to vertex mode, those vertices that we had before are now gone. So just keep that in mind when you're removing an edge. You want to make sure that if you want to remove the vertice underneath, need to press control backspace. Okay, so let's soften some of these edges. Oh, before we do that, actually, I do want to make this rim a little bit bigger. So let's go back to polygon selection. This is already highlighted for us, which is great. And I'm going to press R on the keyboard to bring up my scale tools. And I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. Something like that. If you find it a little bit hard to get the right number that you're looking for, you can sort of zoom out and that sort of helps. I think that looks good. Okay, let's zoom in. And I think I want to make this area where the wood is more recessed. So let's click this polygon. Let's hold down control and double click the polygon next to it. Let's press W on the keyboard and let's just bring that down just a little bit. Okay. Now I want to soften some of these edges. So a bit too sharp for my liking. So I'm going to press 2 on the keyboard to go to edge selection mode. Double click this outer edge. Hold down control. Double click this inner edge. And then this one here on this dome piece. So what I want to do is I want to chamfer these edges just to cut back that edge a little bit. So with this selected, what I can do is add a modifier on top. And because I have this selection made, the modifier that we add will be localized to this selection. That will still allow us to work non-destructively, which is great. So let's go to our modifier list. And what I want to do is find chamfer. So if I open this up and press C, we end up with cap hole. And if I press C again, we end up with camera map. C again, camera map, cap holes, and then chamfer. So that doesn't really work out. What we can do is open up the modifier list. And chamfer is CH. So if I press CH on the keyboard, it will jump straight to that CH section, which chamfer is right there. Great. So with that enabled, I want to increase the amount here. Maybe it is something like this. 
and I want to reduce the segments to zero. You can have one if you want something a bit rounded. I want this to be flat, so I want that to be zero. And once I'm done with that, go to your modify stack, add an edit poly on top. Great. Let's check out our work. And it looks like something's going on here with my smoothing groups. So I'm just going to quickly fix that the same way we did before. So you can see here, there's some smoothing going on that shouldn't be. So I'm going to highlight this, grab that outer edge, go to where my smoothing groups are. And you can see that this outer edge here shares the same smoothing group as this center dome. Now, when that happens, Max is just saying to uh, these groups of polygons to be smoothed the same way. Well, not actually smooth, but the lighting that hits the surface to be uh, traveling across this as one singular piece. So all we have to do is clear all, and let's just pick something that's not the same as one. So let's pick nine. Let's take a look at it, and that looks great. Okay, so let's press T on the keyboard to bring uh, our camera to the top view. Now we're looking at an orthographic view with no perspective. I'm going to press F3 on the keyboard to bring up my shaded view. And I'm going to press F4 to bring up the wireframes. I want to create these connecting pieces that connect the center dome to the outer rim here. So I'm going to use a separate piece for this. Let's go to our create tab box and I want to create a box just about here. Let go of the box to drag out the height so something like that would do and make sure you press right click to cancel out that selection or creation in this case. Let's go back to perspective mode again by pressing P on the keyboard. Let's take a look at what we've just made. Cool. So I'm going to change that to gray like I do. And I'm going to press one on the keyboard to go to my modifier stack. I want to make sure that this is centered on the X axis. So you can see here in the coordinates menu down at the bottom, it's off center by negative 0.235. So I'm just going to right click these arrows to center that right up. And the first thing I'm going to do here is add a modifier stack. Now, just note that the box I've made has a length, width, and height segment of one. Edit poly, edit poly again. Now, I don't really want to have the backside and the underside of these uh, of this object here because it's not being seen, and it seems like a waste to have it there. So what I want to do is delete that. I don't really want to move the object because it's in a perfect position for me, but it's being uh, hidden by the main shield. So what I'm going to do is press Alt Q to go into isolation mode. Press four on the keyboard. I'm going to highlight this polygon face. Press Control to highlight this one. Navigate around, hold down control and grab this one here. Now we want to delete this polygon face, this one and this one. So we're not going to press backspace on the keyboard. We're going to press the delete key, just like that. Now, once we're happy with that, let's press Alt Q again to bring us back to our view. Right. So let's give this the same treatment we did with the other pieces and chamfer this edge just a little bit. So let's press two on the keyboard. Let's press F4 so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to grab this edge, hold down control and grab the other edge as well. And I'm not going to use 
the chamfer modifier this time. What I want to do is go into my edit edges in my edit poly modifier and find chamfer. But in this case, what I want to do is press this button here, which is the settings. Now your menu might look a little different to mine and that's because I'm not using the caddy controls. I find that pretty hard to memorize what each icon does and I find it slow to hover over each icon and figure out what that icon means. So if you want your menu to look like mine, all you need to do is go up to the menu bar where it says customize, preferences, and under general UI display, we have caddy controls. So enable caddy controls. You want to turn that off. Press OK. Go back to chamfer. Use the settings and you'll have the same menu as me. So let's increase the amount here. Not too much, maybe something like that would do. And of course, I'm going to reduce the segments to zero. Great. Let's press OK to that. And we need four of these. So one on each side and the bottom. So let's go back to the top view and let's go to object mode. So let's click this button again, whatever we have selected here, we just need to click that again to go to object mode. And we want to rotate this and make a radial array of these uh, slats. Now, this isn't going to work for us because our pivot point is in the center of the object, but we need our pivot point to be in the center of this object. So we can easily change that just by going up to the command panel and going to the hierarchy tab. We have this button here called effect pivot only. Let's click that. And you can see our gizmo has changed a little bit. Now we want to make sure we get this right in the center. So let's utilize our snap feature, which is right up here. Let's press that. And we want to right click to go to the options. Because our object is in the center of the world, let's snap by grid points and let's turn anything else off. And just to check, go to options and just make sure enable access constraints is turned on. This makes it much easier and much more powerful to use the snap settings in 3ds Max. Let's exit this menu. Let's highlight the Y handle here and drag down until we can snap right in the center. So you can see if I press E and R for scale, the pivot point has changed. So let's turn effect pivot only off. Let's turn off our snap tools. And what we can do now is turn on our angle snaps, which is up here. So by default, if I right click this menu, you can see that we are snapping every five degrees. And that will be perfect for us. So let's hold down shift. Let's grab this outer handle here, which is the Z handle. And you can see we have a menu up here that shows where our angle is snapping to. And we want 90 degrees here. When we release our button, we can copy this a number of times so we can clone this object. So holding down shift and dragging something out or moving something out or rotating or scaling will clone the object. So let's clone this object three times. One for here, one for the bottom, and one for the left. Let's take a look at what we've done. Great. That's looking pretty good.
Okay, so let's take a look at how we can take this model to the next level. I want to add some extra features here. So I know I want to add some rivets that sort of run along the outside of the shield to suggest some sort of nail or something going into the metal and connecting that to the wood. I also want to add some damage, some wear and tear to some of this uh, metal that's on the outside because that's what would happen if this shield was actually taken into battle. And if we have time, let's create the wood slats for the shield itself. So let's start off with some of the wear and tear. So let's select one of these connectors here. Let's go to our modify tab and I'm going to add an edit poly on top. Press F4 on the keyboard to bring up your wireframes. Let's see what we can do. Let's sort of ding this up a bit. It's a bit too straight. Okay. So I'm going to press the edge selection button. That's also two on the keyboard. I'm going to grab all the edges that run across this model. So I'm going to press Alt Q to go to isolation just to make sure I have them all selected, which is good. I can press Alt Q again to exit isolation mode. And I want to use connect. So connect is all the way up here. Maybe it's down here. There it is. And I want to use the options. So I want to add a few segments here. Maybe four might do the job. And let's press OK. Let's go to object mode by pressing the same button that we have selected in again. And what I want to do here is add another modifier on top. So in this case, let's add a noise modifier. Great. So I want this to be affected only in a certain direction. So in this case, it looks like it's going to be the Y. Nope. I think it's going to be the X. Just left to right. Great. So let's come into here and let's increase this X strength. Let's enable fractal. And let's play around with this. I want too much. We just want to not make this so straight. Up and down, we can start to work with. So let's increase the Z value just to give it a little bit of irregularity to that. And I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So let's go to the modify tab. And let's add another edit poly. Great. Let's take a look at our work just by pressing F4, deselecting everything. And that's looking pretty nice. Now, I want to come into here and add a little bit more damage. So let's add a cut right here. So let's press F4 again. And what I want to do is I think I'm going to isolate this. So let's press Alt Q. And in this tool here, it's best to work in your vertex selection. So let's select that. And we're going to be doing a series of cuts. So let's press Alt C on the keyboard, and this will bring up our cut tool. You can see that activated over here. Now I want to sort of cut from here just by left clicking. And I want to make sure I click on this edge here. You can see that icon changing to let me know that I'm on the edge. And let's do a cut like this. Almost suggesting like a sword has sliced at this part of the shield. 
and then let's come back. Right click to cancel that tool. And then all I want to do is remove a couple of edges here. Let's go to our edge selection. Let's highlight these two edges here. And I'm going to press backspace. I'm not going to hold down control. I'm just going to press backspace. Now we got this big end gone here and we don't really want that. So let's go back to our vertex selection and let's press Alt C again to fix this up. Now this is an end gone here. So let's try to fix this up. So I'm going to grab this vertex here, connect that over here, right click. I'm going to grab this vertex here, connect that over here, right click. And for this one, what I'm going to do is cut from here all the way to here. Right. Of course, I'm going to have to redo this cut from here to here, back up, from here to here, and back up again. So let's do that. Right click. And right click again. Let's make some adjustments here. So let's right click again to cancel that tool. Let's grab these vertex, like so. And let's just move them out a little bit just to open that up. Let's do the center ones as well. Move this out a bit. Right. Let's take a look at our work. Let's take the shaded wireframe off. Okay, we're sort of getting there. So we need to adjust the smoothing groups here. So you can see some faceting going on, some artifacting going on here. So let's go back into our um, edible poly. Let's press our polygon selection mode. Let's press F4 and let's highlight these inner polygons. Let's go all the way down to our smoothing groups, clear all, and let's press one. Let's check out our work. Well, it looks like these are one as well. So let's control Z, take one off, and let's pick something like 11. Right. Now let's do the same for this side, except we're not going to pick 11. We're going to pick something else like 14. And let's take a look. Fantastic. So I'm just going to fix this part up because there's a little line there that I can see. And let's clear it all. Let's give that a one. Great. And I might come into here and just move some of these vertices out just to make this cut look a bit more aggressive. Let's bring this out a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. All right, let's press Alt Q again. Let's take a look at our work. And that, great, that looks, that looks fantastic. So what we can do here is then just make some Slight edits to the shape to make it look a bit more menacing. Okay. What I'm going to do here is just copy this around, or if I don't want it to look all the same, I can repeat this cut elsewhere along the model. So let's do that for now. Let's go to the middle dome because this is probably going to get the most damage and let's add a cut here. So let's highlight this main body. Let's press F4 and let's see what we can do. Now I think I want a big gash coming across here. Again, let's press one on the keyboard to bring up our vertex selection. 
let's just click off so we have nothing selected. And let's press Alt C. So I want this gash to probably come from the top bottom. So I'm in the front view or facing the front view and top. I want it to come across about here. So let's just make the cut. All right, so let's click here, maybe here, here, here. And I'm not too worried about how it, the topology looks at this point because I know I'm going to fix it up later. Let's add the one there and let's close the connection. Great. Let's right click to cancel that and right click again to cancel the whole thing. It looks a bit messy, but let's fix this up. Now over here, these vertices are so close to each other, they may as well just be one. So let's right click, and right now we have the quad menu. So this menu here can sometimes have two quads or two menus, sometimes it can have one. In this case, we have four. So over here in the bottom left hand quad menu, we have target weld. I'm going to click that. And how this tool works is that I click on a vertice and I click on the other vertice that I want that to be welded to. So in this case, I want this one here to be welded to this one here. Then I want this one to be welded to this one. And over here, I will do the same thing. So this is close enough. So I'm going to grab this one, weld that to this one, and this one, let's weld that to this one. Right click to cancel the tool. Now let's delete some edges. So I want to get rid of this one and this one here. Let's go to our edge selection. Let's grab this. Control click, let's grab that and let's press backspace. Cool. Let's go back to vertex and let's create that line in the middle. So let's press Alt C. Let's grab this vertex up here, connect that down here. Right click and let's make a new cut. So let's connect these guys up to these guys. And it's okay that it's looking like that because we're going to fix it right up. So let's click here, down here, back up. Whoops. Let's try that again. There we go. Right click. Let's click this one, down here, back up. Right click. Let's click this one this one and this one, right click. And let's do the same right here. Let's click this one, do this line and back up. And let's sort of fix up this area here. So what we can do is grab this vertex and line that up over here. On the other side, let's do something similar. Okay getting a bit messy. So let's take a look at what we've done. Right click to cancel that tool. F4 to C. Okay, so it is very messy. Let's fix up the smoothing groups and then let's further clean up this model. All right, so let's grab these guys that are in the center and I'm gonna give that a smoothing group down here. So let's clear all, I'm gonna give it something like an eight. Let's do the same for the other side. And let's give that a clear all, and I'm just gonna pick something like 18. So let's take a look. And it's getting a lot better. We just got some errors up here. And that's because we've got a big end gone right here. So let's fix that right up. Now, I'm probably gonna zigzag this connection and create a whole bunch of tries perhaps. I know I'm not gonna subdivide this. 
Um, there could be a better way on doing this. So this is certainly not the best way. But it should be fine. So let's press Control C. I'm going to grab this vertex to this vertex. And let's see if we can sort of make a cleaner uh, topology up here. And let's go from here to here, from here to here, and from here to there. And let's do one more from here to here. Oh, actually, let's not do that. We have this face here, and let's go from this vertex, and let's cut across here to here to here. And back up. Let's do the same from here all the way down to here. And right click. So down here, let's see if we can fix this up. Let's just make some connections going across. And it looks like we can. Right. We could smooth this out a little bit if we wanted to. Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to grab these vertices in the middle. And right now this gizmo is getting in the way of me selecting this vertex. So I could rotate this across and select that. But what I could do is just press Q to hide that gizmo. And that will allow me to sort of control and click these ones in the middle that we've just sort of made. Now I've got these selected. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to where we see relax. And I'm just going to press that a few times. Oops, sorry. I don't want to paint relax. What I actually want to do is find the relax button under edit geometry. Okay, so that can soften that out a bit. And let's do the same for these guys here as well. I might just press that once. Maybe over here as well. Let's see what that gives us. That sort of cuts into there. So I don't know if I want that. I might just manually move that over. All right, let's take a look at our work. Just notice though, we do have an end gone here. So I'm just going to fix that right up by pressing Alt C. And I'm just going to cut from here to here and here to here. Right click to cancel the tool. Right, that's looking really cool. All right, so what I'm going to do now is create some rivets. I would say a couple more cuts on this center dome and a few more cuts elsewhere would make this model look pretty good. Um, I'm going to add some rivets though. So let's go back to our create tool or create tab. And I'm just going to create a little box just like that. In the parameters here, I'm just going to make it five by five by five. Right click to cancel the creation method. And what I'm going to do is press one to go into my modifier tab. And straight away, I'm going to add a modifier. In this case, I'm going to add a turbo smooth. So I press T on the keyboard and we find turbo smooth. And you can see it's rounded this out quite nicely. So I can press F4 on the keyboard to bring up the wireframes. And this will be fine. So I'm just going to change this to gray like I do. And I'm just going to scale this down a little bit because I don't want it to be too round. And after that, let's add an edit poly on top. Okay. So I only need half of this. So let's go into our polygon selection. Let's draw a little box over half of this. And I want to delete it. Right. 
But what I can do here is I can use a radial array just like I did before, or I can manually sort of place these around. Now I think in this instance, I might manually do it because I do want this to feel organic and not machine. So I want some irregularities to how this is built. So what I want to do is bring the pivot point up a little bit. So in the hierarchy tab, effect pivot only, press W to go to our move tool. I'm just going to bring that up. I'm just going to eyeball this. Let's go to the front view. And I kind of want it to go in a little bit. I don't want it to be exactly on that point, just a little bit up. Let's go back to perspective by pressing P and let's turn that effect pivot only off. Now, in this case, what I want to do is just eyeball this. So I'm going to right click, go to the bottom right quad menu, which is this one here. And we have a tool called placement. I'm going to click that and I can left click this object and drag it on top of other things just like that. And it should conform to that surface, which is really cool. So I'm going to add one right here. And I think I want to make this a little bit shorter and a little bit smaller. Okay. So all I'm going to do here, is go back to my move tool, hold down shift, right click. Oops. In this case, I want to right click, go to placement, then hold down shift and just move those around. Now we're going to have to cancel this box every single time. So let's just press OK. And let's right click placement, move this around. Right, I think one more and we'll be good to go. All right. So let's go out of wireframe mode. And let's take a look at what we've done. Great. And that's looking pretty good. So what I want to do is just quickly fix these up. Let's get it, get it a bit of uh, noise. So it's sort of not as clean as it is now. And I want to just add some noise to one of these and just to change it up a little bit. But for you guys, um, add the noise and add some cuts into it as well if you want to. So let's press two on the keyboard. Let's grab all these edges here. Whoops. Let's make sure we're in edge selection. And looks like I'm still in placement mode. I'm just going to press W on the keyboard to get out of that. I'm going to press edge again. And I should be able to draw a box over all of these lines. And I'm going to press connect. So you should memorize what we were using before the settings. So I should be able to just press the connect button over here. In this case, it didn't. So let's go back one by pressing control Z. Let's go to settings and let's add four segments. That's okay. Go back to object mode and let's add a noise modifier. So let's increase the X. Let's add fractal. And let's balance this noise out a little bit, I think. Something like that. Let's add a bit of height noise. So in the Z. Great. 
And you know what? I'm just going to delete these two. And I'm just going to come into here and rotate this 90 degrees. And let's add two. Right. If we don't want these to be the same, we can just change the seating around to something random. And it will be different. Okay. That might be a bit too rough. I'm just going to reduce that a little bit. Same thing over here. And now that I look at this one, I'm going to bring it down a little bit as well. Right. So let's add the wood slats here. Now, I think what I want to do is use the same surface. Sort of clean that up. Add the wood slats. And I think that should work. So let's highlight the main body of the shield. Let's go to polygon selection. And let's grab the center polygon. So it's a bit hard to select at the moment. So I'm going to press Alt Q to go into isolation mode. And I just want these ones here. So let's grab these ones. Double click to select that ring. And I'm going to go to the right here and detach. So I'm going to use detach options. So there's settings here. And I want to make sure none of these are ticked. And let's press OK. Now let's go into object mode. And let's grab that new piece that we've just separated. Which is right here. OK. And let's think about how we're sort of going to do this. So obviously, wood slats just go up and down. Let's sort of figure out how this is going to work. Hmm. OK, let's go to the top view. Let's go to vertex mode. I think what I want to do is just connect these together. Let's see where that leads us. So let's press Alt C. And I want pretty thick slats. So I'm going to go from here down to about here. And I might skip a couple. So let's go from here to here. The center line is still there. So that's good. Let's go from here to here. Let's just control Z and redo that one. Right. Doesn't really want to work for me. So let's see what we're doing wrong. Okay, I'm grabbing the wrong one. It should be this one here. Right. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's see, what can we do? So what I want to do is grab all of these right here in the middle. And I think I want to merge these all together. So let's right click in the scene. Let's go to the bottom left hand quad menu and let's go to weld, but let's use the settings here. And let's create, increase this threshold until they all snap together, just like that. Press OK. Let's go to our edge selection mode. And what I want to do is select the edges that I don't need. So I don't need this one. I don't need this one. Don't need that one. That one. This one. This one here. And I don't need this one. This one. This one. Or this one. I don't need this one, and I do not need this one here. So let's press Control, Backspace. We can further clean this up. Actually, now that I think about it, we don't need this one either. But let's see what's going on here. Okay, so let's just grab this and this, this one and this one. And this one and this one and this one and this one and control backspace. Whoops. 
looks like we don't need this one or this one, this one and this one. Great. I think I do want to keep this center line. Yeah. Okay, so let's just make this shield or the wood part a little bit thicker because it's sort of sticking out a bit. But let's extrude this or scale this up a little bit like so. So it's penetrating this wood here. Now, what we can do in this case, I do want to go back to isolation. I think I do want to delete half of this. So let's go to our polygon selection. Let's highlight half and let's press delete. And I want to grab each of these uh, polygon faces like so. And I want to extrude, except I don't want to hold down shift and extrude up. What I want to do is extrude this slightly differently. So I think what I want to do is right click, go to the bottom left hand quad menu where it says extrude and you know, let's use the options. And I want to extrude by local normal. Actually, I do have a better idea. Let's cancel that. Let's right click again. And let's use the bevel options. So beveling is like extrusion and inset all in one tool. So we've got a nice height here. I'm going to reduce that though. Something like this. And let's increase that amount. So we want to use local normal here. Or in this case, actually, we want to use by polygon. just to get that little separation there. Okay, let's press okay. And what we don't need is all these bits on the side. So let's go to the top view. And to make this easier for us, let's press Q on the keyboard and let's go to the right here and drag a little box over all these center pieces because this is what we want to keep. Now we can inverse this selection by pressing control I, or we can go up to edit. And over here we have select invert. We don't need these. So let's press delete on the keyboard. Right. And see what that looks like. Oh, before we do that, Let's add a symmetry modifier to get the other half back. So let's go to our modifier list. Let's add symmetry. And let's make sure we get the right symmetry. So I'm going to untick this. And I think we want Y. Right. So there's a little gap there. If you have that, that's okay. Because what we want to do is go to edible poly. And we want to show end results, which is this button here. And what we can do is go to our vertex selection, grab all of these ones in the center here, and let's just move them down until they meet. Turn that vertex selection off, and then let's go back to symmetry. Let's go back to our scene by exiting the isolation mode by pressing Alt. Q. It's a bit high, so let's just bring this down by scaling it. Like that. And you know what? It's a bit too straight. So I'm going to add an edit poly on top. And like we did before, let's go to our isolation mode. I think what I want to do here is add some edges that run across. Okay, let's press Alt 1. I think I'm going to be a bit lazy with this. Maybe, maybe not. No, I'm going to be a bit lazy. So let's just add an edge here and an edge here. And just like we did with the 
connection pieces for the inner and outer metal parts. Let's add a noise modifier. So I don't have anything selected here. So let's add a noise. And let's just add a little bit of noise to the X axis. Let's see if Fractal will enhance that look. Let's balance this out. A little bit here. We won't, don't want too much. Maybe something like that. All right, let's press Alt Q to get out of isolation mode. Let's just balance this detail out a little bit. Okay. Right, that's looking pretty cool. Now, all of these little cuts we can add to the wood itself if we wanted to. What we could do here as well is add some noise to the outer metal part to give it a bit more of a dinged up look. We can also add some, not so much cuts, but flattened sort of pieces. For example, we can go into vertex mode, grab one of these vertices, right click, and we can extrude. Let's use the options here. And let's extrude the base width like that. Press OK. You can remove this face here by pressing Backspace and just connect some of these together using our target world. And what we can do here is sort of just move some of these apart. And let's sort of bring some of this down. And let's connect this back up. So let's right click. Let's go to the top left hand quad menu where it says cut. Let's cut these two together. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Great. Looks like we need to fix the smoothing groups up a little bit. Let's just do that. Oops, I've got to right click to cancel that tool. And let's see, let's scroll down. This is smoothing group one. And what's this one? Smoothing group three. So let's grab this one here. Let's make that six. Let's make that eight. And let's make this one one. So let's clear that. And let's clear this one here and make that three. Let's see if we can bring this up a little bit just to fix that up. It looks like what we need to do is fix that end gone up because we do have an end gone here. And let's just cut from here to here to hold that polygon shape a bit. So let's right click, cut. Let's go from here all the way to here. We do have a quad over here, so that's fine. And we do have a try over here. So let's go from here all the way to here or here. Let's keep it the same as the other side. So let's go up here. Right click to cancel the tool. And that's fixed that edge right up. So we can add all of these little dings and flattened parts here. Just experiment with the tools that we've already played around with and the techniques that we've already used and see what you can do. If I was going to do this further, I'll add a lot more irregularity to this outer rim and just ding it up a bit. I might not always use the noise here. So I might actually come in manually and sort of pull these parts out and in to just change the way this looks. Because to me, right now, it's a bit too perfect. 
and I do want to change it up. That's okay, that's not perfect. All right. You could try the noise. Let's localize that noise just to this area here. Let's add a noise. Modifier. And let's see if that's going to help speed things up. Let's add a fractal. Let's go to perspective. And let's add noise in pretty much every direction. Let's see. Let's Just to knock things around a little bit. It's probably a bit too much. I wanted it to be a bit more subtle. Okay. That's done a pretty good job. All right. I think that's the end for this tutorial. I hope you like it. Um, feel free to add as much to this as you want. And I'll love to see what you guys come up with.